He's about health care reform, and his background is in family medicine. Dr. John Fleming represents Louisiana's 4th District, and he has relentlessly represented the interests by fighting for sound economic policy, for pro-jobs, and a sensible health care reform. He wants a solid energy policy, and really he's for traditional family values. Dr. Fleming is a member of two House committees, the Armed Services Committee and Natural Resources. His experience in the Navy led to the foundation for his medical practice, which has been an award-winning success. At this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. John Fleming. Dr. Fleming? Thank you. Well, good afternoon. What kind of energy do we have in this room this afternoon? Well, we'll get started. It's great to be among friends today. After serving in Washington for a year and a half, I can tell you that I am tired and by the liberals in Washington. These liberals are hell-bent on putting our economy, the free economy, the economy of free people, under a socialistic model, a Western European socialistic model. Let me tell you that I am a lifelong pro-gun, pro-life, pro-business Republican and conservative to boot. You know, you probably think that Washington has been a little dysfunctional lady, lately. Is that true? You have no idea. First, Congress authorized $700 billion bailout for poorly managed companies that were allegedly too big to fail. Then it brought most of the American automotive industry under the Oval Office. Next, with unemployment at 7.2 percent, Congress implemented an $860 billion so-called stimulus bill, which provided for thousands of pet projects. Pet projects such as $3.4 million to build a pathway for turtles to pass under the highway. You'll love this one. $390,000 to pay students at a New York college in order to study them drinking malt liquor and smoking marijuana. I think they would have done it for free. I, you know, a year later, after passing this monstrosity, and we've only spent 40% of it, where are American jobs today? We're at an unemployment rate of 9.7 percent. The promise was, if we pass this crazy bill, it'll never be above 8.5 percent. Then came cap and tax, a $646 billion boondoggle with the express purpose of putting our energy under federal government control. Now, has this ever been tried before? Believe it or not, Spain implemented this 10 years ago. Where is Spain today? Their unemployment rate is 20 percent. Their manufacturing has shrunk to nothing, and their utility bills are 40 percent higher. Do you think that's something we need for this country? As a physician and a small, small business owner, I campaign on the need for health care reform. Americans currently have access to the best health care on the face of the earth. Absolutely. If you don't believe that, then where do the wealthy, the heads of state, and the celebrities from all around the world, when they need excellent health care, where do they go? America. Absolutely. Just the other day, the premier of Newfoundland, that's in Canada for some of us who are in Louisiana, he crossed the border to get heart surgery instead of getting it in his own country. Well, if, if, our, if, if Canada is good enough for his citizens, why isn't it good enough for the Premier of Canada? <laughs> Yet we know the system is not perfect. We have problems with cost and coverage. 
And I believe Americans want Congress to work to solve these problems with common sense solutions. However, I believe the solution does not include taking a wrecking ball to our current system and rebuilding it in the image of Castro, Chavez, and Karl Marx. A complete takeover of one-sixth of our economy, the most important and the most intimate part of our economy. Remember that universal health coverage does not mean universal access. Remember that. Universal health care coverage does not mean universal access. We, look, we need to look no further than England, Canada, and other countries with socialized health care to understand this. These countries routinely delay or ration needed care to the detriment of the sick. Surely health care delayed is health care denied. We can accomplish true reform by surgically attacking each and every problem, such as pre-existing illnesses, cost, and the need for competition. You know, you've, you've heard through this health care debate that the Republican Party is the party of no. I think some of us want it to be the party of hell no, right? Did we hear that? Yeah, hell no to socialism, absolutely. But believe it or not, Republicans have submitted several bills that would address such problems as what I mentioned, pre-existing illnesses, cost, and competition. I pledge to you today that if you give us back control of the House of Representatives, my colleagues, my Republican colleagues and I, will work to repeal and replace this crazy takeover of the health care of our country by our government. But my friends, in the end, this is not about building cars. It's not about health care reform. It's not even about the environment. This is about the liberal leftist vision of bringing the entire economy under the control of the federal government. In short, socialism. Make no mistake about it. I have a vision to do. I have a vision as well. Though we have a Congress that ignores the will of the people as well as the Constitution, I have a vision of a Congress that legislates according to the will of the people and follows the Constitution, the same Constitution that we are sworn to protect and defend. Though we have a government that believes it can regulate and micromanage your life, I have a vision of a government that promotes individual freedom, liberty, and a meritocracy where you can accomplish anything if you're willing to work for it. Though we have a Congress that votes itself raises and cars itself exceptions to laws, I have a vision in which elected officials are subject to the same rules and regulations as are the people they rule over. <laughs> Though we have a government that demonizes the private sector in order to implement its government takeover of our economy, I have a vision of a government that lets small businesses and the private sector do what it does best, invent, innovate, and provide more consumer choices. And finally, though we have a president who reaches out to our enemies and turns his back on our friends, I have a vision of a president who, like Reagan, stands up to our enemies and stands with our friends. In conclusion, if there is anything I can leave you with today, that is that when it comes to liberals in Congress, you cannot change minds. You can only change the people who represent us in Washington. Thank you very much and God bless.